Here's what the bracket looks like. Double elimination, so teams that lose this week will still be in it. Down in the loser's bracket next week. But they'll have a much longer road to go through, having to win two matches a week after the first week. We're starting with Canada versus Australia. And it's just a top half of me. Welcome! Hi. I'm kind of sick, but yeah. Calm down. The fun. Perfect. So, uh, how do these teams do in group stage? Canada was the winner of group C. They won all four of their matches. Only dropped four points. Australia finished second in group F behind Netherlands, upsetting the top seed United Kingdom. Well, three and one, and uh, yeah. We made it here. So, Canada is uh, top seed. Yep. Yeah, and Australia is basically the bottom seed. Uh, they're, they're a mid seed. Yeah. Oh, mid seed. Okay. So yeah, this would be interesting match because uh, Australia being a mid seed, but being the second, like battling Canada's top seed, oh, yes. and everyone saying that they're the six. So insane. Yeah, it's gonna should be an interesting match, but it's mostly might be predicted that Canada might win. I mean, Australia was the highest uh, of the mid seeds, so them getting out of groups actually not too much of a surprise. I mean, if anybody was gonna do, it would be them. And they managed to get uh, UK in a bad spot. Yeah. No, I'd say that gets all the UK was just uh, that's a crazy was last year, but yeah. With UK I mean they've lost her. It well it's about that there's a lot more room for them to come in, but for Australia again they have a new watcher too. So it's insane for them. Alright, and new map pull this week, round of 16, slightly higher difficulty than the previous round. Yeah. And this is going to be a best of what? Best of 9 this week. Hang on, let me go check something really quickly. Yeah, so it should be first of 5. Alright. Best of 11 starts in the quarterfinals. So yeah, maybe it's a nine. Well, next two rounds at least. Let's just go be a warm up. Yep. Not sure who's warm up though, but can <laughs> it seems like it can a warm up? Uh, like, this could be us, really guess. Considering the four way hidden hard rock, yeah, I, I can see this being Candace. Yeah. Man, it's midnight, so I'm gonna be a little bit late for the Eastern people, but really early for the Australians as well, so it's the uh, 50 50. On how each side would play. Totally right now. <coughs> Just uh, remember, there's a YouTube channel for. That's six W C two. So oh, there is. Yeah. I'm starting to vote all that now because I forgot to do do that last week. So yeah. Just if you want to watch all the boss, it should be coming up out for group season in the next couple of days or so. Ah, right. Yeah. Uh, did you manage to get back home then? What? Oh yeah, I got back home. <laughs> I, I would have came home if you didn't go back a couple. Right, you know, I can see you were streaming uh, still too. Oh, yeah, that's. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, it's doing that. Yeah, I'll <laughs> Sorry. have play. Yeah, I'll have myself played on that, anyways, but yeah. Alright, anyways, yeah, we're on uh, more up here. So tell us about Canada. So, Canada. 
I mean, I haven't even watched anything about Canada so far. But just Canada is a definitely a top seed, but they should be having an advantage on the hidden. But they didn't pick hidden. They banned it. Like, what the hell? But they are definitely all around. All around us, and definitely a hidden one mains. Like, aim consistency for sure. It's good for them. Pause. <coughs> Actually, I don't really know, but I feel like for this. Again, Torsi is playing hidden, so they might be the hidden main on this side. But they all seem that they're doing okay with this map. I mean, this is more of an alt map than anything. So, but the, <coughs> so this might be battling. Like this might be Australia teaching themselves for a number three. And just how much they can keep up with the speed as well. Well, how much they can handle cut streams, but yeah. Yep. All right. This is our, this is our other warm up. Yep. This is this house. This. Funnily enough, I think I already had this map downloaded from a previous tournament. Is it like early morning for Australia? Yeah, it is. It's like maybe like 8 a.m. for them. Something like that. Let's see. Oh no, it's uh, let's see. Perth is noon. Kings, uh, Western is. Where's Kingston? That'd be the first east. Oh yeah, so it's like early afternoon. Yeah. But for some people, it's, really, it's more early than that, too. So, yeah. Sydney, it's 2 p.m. Yeah, so it's, it's mostly yeah. early afternoon. Yeah. God, this song. Uh, do you know anything about this Australia team? Or like I, I, again, they seem like the Torsi is the hidden, the hidden mod, and everyone else is just questionable. But I feel like Australia has a bit of the same answer, but new players as well. And also, did you change the stream title? I'm pretty sure I did at the start. It'd say 60BC round of 16 Canada versus Australia. Before it starts streaming. Very refreshing. Okay, now it did, but for. <laughs> no, because I'm looking at the. Video put producer tab in the in the six W C channel. Uh, and yeah, saying yeah. and saying that it, yeah, it's still six W C too. That's it on sixteen. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it they have a change too late. So now the boss is going to say that. <laughs> Wait, what what should what should the title say? And the bot should say six W C to Canada versus Australia. But the bot is going to say 6WC round 16 map will showcase. No, no, the bot says 6WC2 round 16 kind of versus Australia. It's got 9 minutes so far. It's because you changed it. No, 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 there. I changed it before I started the stream. Oh. Yeah, I actually did the right thing. Okay, no, okay, no, yeah, no, okay, now it's showing. It, it just probably wasn't showing for you yet because it probably yeah. loaded before it started. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm having that. Yeah, this is one of the few times I remember to do it at them. <laughs> okay, cool. Sorry, we're just uh, sounding confused to fill time here. This is a, this is a skit. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, totally just didn't waste any time. Yeah, what is taking them so long, too? Wait. Well, you know what's funny? They might need to reschedule. <laughs> what? <laughs> This might be the reason why that we need to fill out so much space. Uh, yep. <clears throat> Reschedules must be agreed 12 hours before matches that begin. A reschedule uh, later than this is not be counted as valid. Any reschedule later than the deadline will be only allowed. Will only be allowed if there are extreme circumstances and must be approved by the admins first. Any admins awake right now? It doesn't look like. Well, Hobo's awake. Okay. Ask Hobo. Okay, uh, just tag Hobo, what the fuck is going on? 
<laughs> That's literally just the only thing you can do right now. Just tag up what, what to do. Yeah, so is, is the problem that somebody just didn't show up, or what's going on? Maybe that someone needs to go. Uh, Iba is flying. Wait, wait, it's cool. Let's go back up. Wait. Yeah, I'm schooling. And hey, Kevin's having technical issues. Technical issues, yeah. yeah. Let's go down. There was technical issues. Alright. Well, we'll see what's happening. Yeah. Uh, soon enough. Yes, uh, rescheduling after the first war. Uh, welcome to next level 6 WC action. <laughs> I'm not a DC. Apparently, we're playing this at halftime. Oh, wow, it's CS10. Oh, God. <laughs> That's... Oh wait no wait no <laughs> okay then I think I know just what this map is. It's gonna be aims. That's there's gonna be a lot of jumps, like a oh, way too much jumps. Oh god, why did they put Morgana in the background? All right, well, I'm gonna panic. But by the time that loads, the map will be over because it's 32 seconds long. Um, uh, my neighbor's going by with a motorcycle. Damn. Is that easy? <laughs> Easy Slide. half time. Half time, okay. But no, I can't be half time because only Ibo would have the half time. Hmm. Wait, there's no half time. Oh, that's. I think that's spun out. Yeah, that that must be spun out. But he said they they were supposed to, they were going to do half time, but he didn't do half time. What the hell? We got robbed. <laughs> oh, and they also forgot to put no fail on. So. Well, Australia didn't put on no fail. Canada did. Well, didn't forget. Some people just chose not to. Yeah. Uh, and yes, that was... Uh, Australia's warm-up. That was actually easy mod oh. from Gordon. Oh, and yeah. Eyeball. Yeah, everyone from Canada <coughs> played easy. From the side of Australia, they did none. Because, you know, you said CS10. So... Yeah, not, not now it's like a CS3. We'll have another commentator joining us pretty soon. It's going to totally not be Canadian biased. Oh no, definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. So that's it for our warm ups. Well, let's see if the thing is actually going to happen or not. <laughs> that's the more important thing. Yeah, looks like they're getting in the band, so I guess they're gonna play. So, in thought, then Canada has a full boss, and Australia has a boss of four. Uh, That's five, most likely what's happening right they now. They had six five. people here for a while. Let's... Okay, then it's a boss of five. Yeah. So band coming from Kura, that is Kuretia, that is Australia. They did hit too. Hmm. Well, because, you know, kinda hidden too. Yeah, that's 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 a solid band. The Zuni method. <laughs> but at the same time it's just Yeah. A lot of people it's uncomfortable with hidden with AO8, so really it's on set if Australia isn't. But mostly just because Canada can abuse that too, so yeah, it's not time for them to ban it. So if anybody's new to tournaments, uh, maybe you don't watch too many, we're in the, the bracket stage now. It's double elimination, meaning these teams keep playing until they lose two matches. Yep. And the last team remaining at the end will be the winner of the tournament. Second last team to go out will be second. And so on. Why is there Bam. a nice commentator? Oh no, actually the other commentator is going to be Eiflin. Yeah, but both Canadians, so... <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's the reason why. Hi! Welcome! Uh, how's it going here? 
Uh, we just listened to the second warm up about 20 times in a row while they try to figure out if they're going to reschedule. So, pretty good. Hey, Very mate, cool. Hey, mate, I'm commenting while sick. So, that's cool, too. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Well, we do have a Hard Rock 2 ban and a Hidden 2 ban. So, both of the gimmick maps out of the pool already. A little bit disappointing, but what can you do? CS615. <laughs> who, who likes that, anyways? Uh, <laughs> True. I just hear heard the warm up. It's it's so awful. <laughs> yeah, I heard it twenty five times. Ah, uh, man, I feel bad for you. They are gonna go with No Mod Five, which I assume is gonna be the speed pick. No, it's gonna be the AR Seven pick. It's one hundred and thirty five BPM. So a gimmick pick. <laughs> mm. Yeah, pretty much. So this really just depending on the reading, but again, this. It's a Canada pick as well, so you would expect them to do well, but we'll just see the map itself if Australia did practice. But at the same time, remember that Australia is down a player, but maybe the player that's actually good with AR7 is still here. <laughs> Looking at yeah. Dorsey though. Yeah, it's but that. these kind of gimmick picks do tend to be the more kind of skill gap picks where you actually need multiple players who are good at the map, especially in the early rounds. And uh, against a team like Canada, I don't think you can afford to have only one AR7 player. True. Good. <coughs> it's for something like Canada, they're going to have multiple FCs. Because of like, how balanced they all are. So, yeah. For us to have like a good pick, they mostly would need to get everyone to have above 600k or so. Just to have like a better or good safe chance. To get to get a competition, you know. Wait, the because oh, this is only two minutes though. So yeah, it minute could and thirty-five go. accuracy oh. not gonna matter much. Wait, minute thirty-five. Or sorry, a minute fifty, <laughs> hundred thirty-five BPM. Don't mind me. Well, oh. you can. Yeah. Yeah, but you going to say there's a lot of the old mapping stuff of, of stacks. Yep, you took the words right out of my mouth. A very linear old style aim. We already see two misses. Mischief Delta. Gordon is going to trade, but two for one. Going to favor Canada pretty heavily, especially because we're already a quarter of the way into the map and three FCs to two. Yeah, with the three FCs to two as well, the best actually overall is Ninja Juju on the side of Team Canada. And uh, and Alba and Alba is uh, on the side of Canada too. Well, for the side of the team Australia, with two FCs, Kuana and Torsi, they both have really not decent activity with 87 and 92. But that's a matching flick though as well on Team Canada with 81 hack. And Delta for them has found another miss. So it's just going to be kind of chain misses for Australia and Torsi. That's a really big drop for Australia. One of those last two FCs down. And Mischief! Only Karana holding any combo whatsoever up against Ninja, Flick, Gordon, and I, but all four of those players holding pretty big combos now. Gordon not far behind the FC whatsoever. And really, that, it's a, that was a page chip in this whole section too. And it doesn't look like that everyone is actually working out well for Australia. But yeah, for Ken, like you said, with all the FCs that they have, they really just have it in the bag as the map actually does end. Also, wait, what's that like 80 BPM going like 135 going down to like 80 going back up to 135? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, also, this is just kind of what you expect from Canada on the uh, you know, on the gimmick picks. <clears throat> wait, it's like from Canada, just literally flicking <laughs> the flick with an 81. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, the 81% accuracy FC. And uh, Australia going to be looking to take a point now. Well, actually, Kiwana, though, 91% FC. That's still really good, too, for to side of Australia. <laughs> yeah, still impressive score, just not much you can do against the, uh, you know, the 3 million. Yeah, an FC is an FC, so. So we can see that Kiwana is actually pretty good, too. 
with the low AR rating, so maybe for something like the FEMA 2, could help them out there. But they go with HR1 instead. So what is HR1 plan? Well, if I know anything about HR1s, and honestly with how wild pulling is these days, I'm not sure I do anymore. <laughs> so this is just going to be your consistency hard rock. It does tend to be a little bit faster aim than the Gnome Mod 1. You can see it's the 203 BPM. So this is really just going to be hard rock consistency. It tends to be lots of jumps, a couple bursts here and there, and that's usually all there is to it. Hmm. But also another question that I might look at too. What do you know about the mapper, Paradogi? The mapper is Skyflame? Am I trolling? No, it's Paradogi, it's insane. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, I see, I see. Um, I know so much about the mapper. They're a very cool person, and they, they do make Osu maps. <laughs> no, kind of what I mean is like, remember, what was the other map that they made? Oh, I have no idea. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> no, it, it was like the the one with a lot of phase shifts. Like, with a lot of like BPM shifts song. Mm, no, I have no memory for, for maps or mappers. <laughs> well, it tends to collab a lot with Devious Panda Uberfez. Uh, What's the Devious yes. Panda map? Yeah. Wait. Uh, Feral. No, that, that map. Yeah, it's Feral. Oh, Feral, of course. That is oh, a yeah. great map. Like, oh, hey, actually guessed it on one of Gordon's map. Gordon, the player on the bottom left. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Wait, Gordon did a guest it on that too? No, no, Gordon was the main mapper on uh, on one of the maps that this mapper was a guest it on. Oh. Well. Yeah, Cardogi has a lot of guest tips on a lot of our maps. Well, them. Yeah, looks like a couple roster changes. Zephyr going to be coming in, as well as Yo Boy and Cora. Also, Kara too. It looks like that they fixed their tech issues, so now they're here. And like I said, playing earlier with consistency, one was being the first one break. But a lot of Australia has been strong, but Akazis though, not really good for them. Yeah, no, because this is a longer map, accuracy, if you fall behind in accuracy, it's going to make even more of a difference over the course of the map here. But at the same time, you think about it, if you still have an FC though. This is true, as long as you still hold on to the full combo, uh, but that is not the case for Flick, as he finds a miss now. And it's actually going to be three FCs to two, so Australia should be getting the score slowly back in their favor, but they need to hold on to all of their combos because they are falling quite a bit behind in accuracy. Yeah, but at the same time, he gets a carry with Big Golier with the highest icon on their team, too. Well, other than Yo Boy Gloves, Red Knight, Sex. That's actually bounding Haba, too, and Zephyr, but still, Garrus 91 would be a really good change for support. But Kiran actually does pick as well, so actually it's gonna be really close. Oh, Yoba Gold picks too, though. It's gonna be going straight over back to Canada because they're actually in combo. Two FCs to one. Yeah, there is Korit. Kind of the last hope for Australia right now. Saw a little bit of supporting combo, but they're gonna need either Zephyr or Ibaw to find a miss. They do still have quite a bit of map to be played, so they're far from out of it. Wait, Korit's mid chip? What? Mischief is the one with the FC still. Yeah, yeah, Korid is, is just supporting combo. Yeah. Gordon, Karania, gonna be trading combos. That is gonna favor Australia. Gordon had a little bit higher combo, but not gonna be enough. It's really not the combo drop that Australia needs. Mm. And there's so, so much pressure on Mischief and Korra here. If either of those players miss, the map is just over. Yeah, boy, he just, with Zephyr and Alba just going on, going hard with 95 back and 96 act respectively. Zephyr actually does break though, so Alba with 96 act. It seems like they have enough work by it, so when he passed off the map, so Zephyr's gonna be capped to 500k, and Gordon's gonna be capped to like 400k or something. But for Flick, 
he's gonna be the support for Abba that he needs, that they need right, right now. But for Kelwan, like you said, being support to mischief, they can up to score so much and with Yopor co ops and. Okay, never not with Grana, but Yopor co ops. All three of them combined, they could be in the score back. Yeah, but Flake is there, honestly, only 100 combo behind Korra, and they're about 200,000 uh, points behind, so they have a lot of work to do, and honestly, they're probably going to need another miss from Canada. I mean, it's like I mentioned at the start, the accuracy is being so important on these longer maps. You see Aiba is up 200k just by having the higher accuracy. Korra and Flake going to trade, that's going to help Canada out quite a bit. Oh, wait, you said this here, but actually, not you seeing at this too. Actually, it does matter so much right now because Abba's been 96, which is Mr. Snake, but Mr. 87. But Yoba goes to support 95. It actually is, will be staying up to Canada just because of the accuracy. Yeah, and just literally, just they're both full comboing. Just off the back of accuracy, this is 180,000 point difference between these two full combos on each team. And Canada is going to be taking a break point here, going up 2 0 early on. Solid team performance out of them. This is close, but not the close that you expect. <laughs> just unfor it's just really just unfortunate for Team Australia because they do seem like they have that they're great competition against Canada, but this is for the second time now they lost because of accuracy. Well, the first time they lost because of race. This one it would have been really really close. But the only reason why they lost is because of accuracy. Canada is going to go right back to consistency with the HD1. This is, of course, going to be much lower, 160 BPM. It's a little bit different, but still kind of that consistency map nonetheless. And so you're going to look two players like Aiba, uh, Shinobu coming in makes a lot of sense. Is kind of one of those staple HD players for Canada. Uh, we're going to see Tassin Torsi come back in. And who do we think is the last player uh, for these two teams? Call, well, Call it came before, but Delta with him is back, so most likely Delta with him is going to be the player of the year. But Torsi should be the one playing hidden one because he did play in in the warm up, but it could have <coughs> could have been a troll. But I, yeah, Torsi is still back here. It's more than but that he still plays in. It looks like for Mischief Kiran though. We are seeing that they both are the all rounders. Yeah, I think expected rosters from both teams. Uh, players to watch out here uh, maybe Torsi, Mischief, Aiba, and Shinobu. Yep. Also, another map set of this. Interesting. Oh, wait, no, it's the same map set. I think it oh. is the same map side. I mean, I think the other thing to keep in mind is in these early rounds, it's only round of 16, so really the maps are easy enough that any one of these players uh, can pop off on these maps. Yeah, like what I mean by like a different map set, like I thought it was a different map set, but this was a map set that was played a long time ago. I think I remember this map too. So, yeah, this is going to be a lot of linear patterns, the squares that you see before too. It's going to be a lot of Awkward patterns that you'll see, but for some people like on Team Canada, they should be fine. But again, I have higher wish for Torsi that should that they'll be doing well too. Nobu and Delta are gonna be finding early misses though. Such a long map that honestly not gonna matter too much, but Shinobu chain missing at the start is somewhat concerning. This map should not be that hard, especially this early on. And most players do see the side of velocity as well. No big there, <coughs> but again, like you said, still a uh, three on three FC battle. But nothing with them having a better combo against Nunobu. But surprisingly, as well, everyone's actually in this map is actually you know, going great. But yes, we Ninja do not Dax. talk about Ninja. I'm going Nobody to talk about Ninja. Nobody say the word. <laughs> we will well, ignore Mitchell, Ninja. Well, the thing is, Mitchell book triple does a does like a three miss and Ninja book. Yeah. I thought about Ninja. But yeah, none of mine now has a 99.2 accuracy. So that's the, that's the version that we shouldn't talk about. Because that's the one that's way common in this map. But honestly, Bowling as well is still Kiwana and Torsi. 
Diplomacy would be having a lot of nerves too. Well, it's and double miss from Canada. That double miss from Canada, but it's all because of the phase shift again. Yep, the so algorithm that's... has recovered so well. Back at 400 combo. I mean, honestly, only 100 combo behind. You're effectively at three FCs to one here. I bought is kind of the last hope for Canada right now. And we're halfway through the map. The score lead is going to start to go really quickly, especially on these full combos. There's so much score left to be gained. Karania finds a big miss, but Torsi Delta still holding on Australia. Going to be in the lead for now. And the last chorus this is where we're going to have to watch out for more misses. Again, Karana's break actually doesn't mean ma really run that much. Because again, Torsi's accuracy, but climate does it with him, it's FC as well. Basically, he goes to a nice step, but yeah, Alpha break, same with none, never mind. That would be it for Canada. On his, on their own pick of Katsursi and Torsi. Certainly will. Delta Rhythm finds the miss, but it just doesn't matter. Torsi, the, uh, the token <laughs> hidden Australia player, is right there with the FC. Canada misses again. I think they know it is over. And Australia they is going to be getting a break point right back. They saw the score. They know it was over. But like I said, like, like I said, all you, all you too. I had high hopes for Dorsey to be comfortable in his map. And look at that. It worked out for them. So, and like on Hidden Face too, like, if you think about it even more, what would, like, I feel like kind of with speed abuse, but for Australia, they'll try to feed mine abuse. Point from what we saw already. Yeah, I think this is a much needed point for Australia. I feel like, you know, dropping your first map uh, against a team like Canada that you would expect to be really strong, you know, is that third seed, is so scary and can be so demoralizing. So to get that break point right back immediately after, it's going to give Australia back some much needed confidence, I think, in this match. And they're going to look to take a second one with their next pick and potentially tie this one up. Oh, yeah. And also, this should be 1-1, one -one, right? Uh, no, it should be 2-1. There was the Hard Rock 1 and there was the Nomad 5 that Canada won. And now Australia winning the Hidden 1 makes it 2-1 for Canada. Oh wait, yeah, the Nomad 5. Yes. Damn, if you didn't get the Nomad 5, it, it, we put a new, but it actually would have been great for Australia. But since you brought up, back up that Nomad 5, yeah, that Vmod 2 might be questionable, but Vmod 1 definitely seems like Australia's main. Yeah, and we, we kind of called out Torchy there as being kind of the, the carry player for Australia, but really that was such a team effort. Mischief at 650k. Karania at 600k, they just look like the better team on that pick, and so very well deserved point. Oh, fuck, they all one missed. <laughs> oh no. That's so <laughs> sad. Well, yeah, otherwise, like what you said, like I said, like with being, with being team effort, yeah, definitely that was a team effort with them all one missing, but all just either at the start or near by the end. Yeah, they all felt so comfortable on this map. But. Yeah, that phase shift is hard, and a lot of people felt that, but it's still fun. They made it through, and yeah, now it's 2 to 1. So, speed abuse? Possibly. It is Australia's pick, though, so I don't think we see double time. Uh, I think it's very possible that we see something like a Nomad 1 after that. Just kind of hop to that last consistency pick, but they are going to be going for PT2 instead. Speed abuse. Seems like it, yeah. Canada, not as much of a speed team uh, this time around as they were in the last OWC, so it's going to be Australia looking to do the speed abusing in this match. Oh, hey. Yeah, you're right. But Canada does, it does feel like Canada has pretty good, you know, speed players, so... But at the same time, remember, this is lower SOAR, so this is true. it should still be fine in this range. But later on in future months, yeah, it just definitely won't be a good, <coughs> good pick, but for Australia, yeah. they might be abusing that instead. Lower SOAR speed. And yeah, I can certainly see it. I mean, DT2 was one of those few things that Canada actually struggled with. Um, in their, you know, in their qualifiers, it really dragged down their overall qualifier seed. Uh, whereas 
almost every other map was top five and then there's d2 where they got 20th so australia maybe pinpointing that weakness and looking to bring this one back to an even match yeah definitely it's to seem like that if they went by the results so they did research <laughs> so you would certainly hope so <laughs> yeah so we'll see how it works out but wait it's just 187 bpm it's just a really speed um this might be finger control. not if it's 187 yeah that would be the finger control map so i guess uh dt3 is going to be the speed of this pool and yeah dt3 is the speed so it's going to be the finger control pick and that makes it a little bit more of a coin flip and one thing that is going to be key on these finger control picks especially at these lower um these lower rated tournaments is going to be that accuracy a lot of players just cannot keep up with hitting all of the slider ends through these triples and doubles, and so we tend to see some pretty low accuracies on these kinds of maps. So if one player can put up good accuracy, that will mean so much for their team. Yeah, so talking about good accuracy right here, let's look at Australia. I mean, 95, 97, 95, and 92 for death with them. But for Team Canada, it's basically just almost the same thing. 97, 95, 95, and 92 for Tsunobu. So yeah, it's going to be very, very even accuracies. But also, if you're looking at, map, at all the different combos too, it looks like there's a little bit of slider ends missing. If you look more at Delta Rhythm, they're missing five slider ends, but for everyone else, it's still full FC. FC. Yeah, this is still an eight way FC, one third of the way into the map. And how about after the halfway point into the map, we are going to approach the next chorus. So any miss on the chorus is going to oh. be a disaster. Mischief is going to find the miss, and that's going to be so huge. Canada is going to take such a big lead here as long as no one misses. Australia needs multiple misses out of Canada in this next chorus here. And no one got sight. Oh my gosh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but yeah, no one got slid No one got slidered. So that's a good thing for Team Canada, especially with okay. them holding out to the quad FC. But here we go into the chorus. Everybody on Canada needs to hold in order to secure this point. Australia with three FCs can certainly come back if they are given the opportunity. But Canada is looking so good on this pick so far. Quarter of the map to go. Can they do it? They definitely look like they could all do it. As they would, as like I said, the last quarter, and it's all mostly would be just free combo. Yeah, and 300,000 score difference. I think this is just going to be it. The rest of this map is honestly not very difficult. There is, you know, a little bit of a tricky ending, but it's oh. Delta Rhythm finding the next miss, and that is just going to put the nail in the coffin for Australia. They are going to be dropping a second breakpoint this match, and <laughs> after being given a chance by Canada to get back into this one, Canada once again leads by two. Shinobu finds the miss at the end, but it doesn't matter. Three point, I believe it's going to be eight or nine million team score for Canada is such an impressive team performance out of them. Yeah, it's going to be a 3.9 mil team score. Almost 4 mil. But still, for a team Australia as well, 3.3. With everyone having an S rank. <laughs> yeah, and 3.3 team mil, I will say, is also a very impressive team score of Australia. It makes a lot of sense why you would pick this with a 3.3 million team score. Just... You know, when Canada looks that strong on the pick, there's just absolutely nothing you can do. A quad FC versus a double FC, but just a slider break. Unfortunate, but again, they, they looked comfortable in this, but at the same time, they should have went for the speed pick. They certainly should have. Might opt to go for that next. Uh, they will have at least one pick left in this match. They're going to be hoping to get a few more. But we'll have to see how it goes. Canada now with the pick uh, can certainly go for something like um, you probably don't go for a DT here. Um, Fremont two and number three. Yeah, yeah I do think Fremont two makes a lot of sense. I could even see a Nomad two out of Canada. Oh, you wait. Uh, oh yeah. By the way, another thing to know. Uh, Canada did the highest or hidden one, I think, as or no, wait, highest or hidden three as a warm up. Oh, interesting. So that's why I feel like no one three might be good for them right there because the old map. So yeah, but they do with three mod one instead. 
yeah, honestly, none of the picks we were expecting. They are going to go for free mod one, which is going to be kind of your more, well, it's not really consistency free mod, but just going to be your more standard free mod. In this case, Violet Rose is going to be somewhat ulti, somewhat finger control. So it, it is kind of similar to uh, Nomad 5 in the finger control sense. Obviously, higher AR, but 8.8 .8 could potentially throw off the hidden players just a little bit. Uh, and the other thing is that this is fairly reading intensive. So this map is going to be extremely tricky on the hidden, on the hard rock. And so you're going to want to look towards the Nomad players to put up big combos because they should be having a much easier time on this map. Hmm. But like the finger control part, like you said though, that's more like a DD2 as well. So it seemed like everyone would be okay enough to do it, but again, since the other map was 187.5 and this is 152, not that much of a BPM change either. It's just the AR is going to be completely different. It's going to be a difference of like 0.8. For sure. And we're, we're probably going to be seeing Torchy on the Hidden for Australia, but I feel like in these kinds of maps, it's honestly not a bad idea to put like the player you expect to be strongest on the Nomad, let them get the guaranteed FC, and just tank the Hidden. Um, but we are early enough in the tournament that they might not need to do that, and Torsi maybe thinks they can get the FC with the Hidden anyways. We'll have to see what they go for here. Definitely not going to be saying any easies on this pick, sadly. An oh, overmod okay. from Canada, Zephyr, Hidden Hard Rock, Gordon, Hidden, and Ninja on the Hidden, whereas it's just Court on the Hard Rock, Torsi on the Hidden, and so we'll have to see if this pays off for Team Canada. I do think it's early enough that they can potentially get away with this, but... Court did FC HR1, right? Um, I believe so. So, just with if you think, accuracy. yeah, then basically, if you think about it, this is a good call for them. Just for doing the safe no to do safe no overmodding, but for us, really, I mean, it's you know, as like I said, two no but anchors would be basically people who would be playing a shot, but for kind of doing the overmod, they know they have a good, <coughs> good lead, really. And they all seem confident in the ulti kind of pick, so yeah, it seems that they all might just be good enough to just play him as well. So, and also 4.7. Like, this is 4.5 to base, but when you try it's 4.7, something like that, for higher AR. So, it seems like Team Canada doesn't really care about who they are. They just find this map fun. This is a very tricky map on the Hard Rock. You see Korra on that Hard Rock mod finding a ton of misses, and that's going to give Canada such a big lead. We're already over halfway through the map, and it's 400,000 points in favor of Canada. Gordon finally finds the miss, but it might just be far too little too late because it's 3 FCs to 3, and Korra just doesn't really have any supporting combo. Ninja does find the miss, but only a quarter of the map to go. I don't think there's going to be enough time. Zephyr, though, that's actually a really big miss. 3 FCs to 1. If there's all three players on the side wait. of Australia can hold, there might be a chance. Ninja and Gordon chain missing. The score bar is going back over, but there's only 10 seconds in the map left. Everybody needs to hold here. It's going to be really nah. close. Nah. There's no it's, way. There, nah. Man, there's time. No, it's going no, not, over. That's, not what, that's not what I'm talking about. Look at the Nah. Spinner? No, look at Nah. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I wasn't going to say anything, but oh, after the spinner, it's 10,000 points, not even. It ends up being a 6,000 point difference in Australia. Is so close on the comeback, oh, but it wasn't okay. enough. Okay, two things. One way you say from Australia, I think not just SS the map. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> God. Okay, so two almost when you see us from Australia, from Toy C, and one absolutely from Delta, but still. NOS FC, NOS SS, like it's so early on in the turning they can still get, but, it's, but still, this is yeah. where they can never see an SS in the turning. Yeah, and honestly, nah, really put the team on his back there. I mean, Australia had the three FCs, everybody on Canada missed, and so if it wasn't for nah, without a doubt, they just are, are losing their own pick once again. Can GG well played right there, but Australia, <coughs> Australia, no more three. They're listening to stream. They, they might, they might be listening to stream. Uh they might be. If they are, I don't think this is a great pick for them. <laughs> yeah, if 
Yeah, if they are let in the stream, you shouldn't kind of pick no matter the way. You kind of pick three matter with that, or no matter what. But yeah, the reason why no matter three is a bad pick is again, if you look back to the warm up that Canada did, they did basically an all map with cut streams, with cut all patterns. And how much the Australia did, and how much good Canada did on it, like they just abused the way JHR just for fun, but they still were really strong with it. But for Australia, they pretty they messed up on, on a lot. So, for Australia, this might be a bad call with them, unless this is gonna be like those, like no matter we last week, or well, you know the map uh, Guncho. Well, play. You shouldn't have known the map Guncho, right? Uh, no. I do not the, know any maps. <laughs> the no matter we from. Uh, <clears throat> from uh, Full America. The one we got uh, later. Nope, don't know it. You forgot the other your Sobby map. Damn. <laughs> so Listen, I'm hopeless with map names. Basically, what basically what that map is is basically really space out triple triples and yeah, just basically really space out triples and awkward patterns. <coughs> awkward patterns too. Fair if it was like that. It's gonna be really bad for them. Yeah, I mean, Let's... it's not only the warm up, but Canada was also the third best team on Noma 3 in qualifiers. I feel like any amount of scouting would tell you that Canada is a very strong Noma 3 team. Oh. And already, yo boy with the miss. I mean, obviously, it's a long map, so not gonna matter too much, but not off to a great start for Australia. And match on the line, they're on match point right now. They can't afford to lose this. No, what's crazy too right now we can't look at because the flex break and your words are already big too. Again, like we always said about accuracy, the score is close by 30k. Just because of accuracy. What's going on here is that Mischief having a 99 and Abba having a 98. That's making a big difference here. Yeah, but honestly, the accuracies, when you look at everybody's accuracy, it's pretty even across the board. And so right now, it is really just going to be Yo Boy with the advantage over Flick and Flick missing again. It's going to give Australia a little bit more of a lead. Thankfully for Canada, they do still have the three FCs and Karainia oh. with a big drop. And that's going to give the score lead right back over to Canada. Australia had a window in back into this match. and. Rania oh. potentially just threw it away. Flick finds another miss, but it doesn't really matter. He didn't have any combo anyways. <coughs> yeah, you're right. It's gonna be three FCs for two FCs and a support combo. But again, the support combo we have a 94 axe as well. Yet the window is closing. But again, that's only halfway in the map. We could see more breaks from Team Canada yep, in the second more. half. Yeah, there is one more chorus, one more really tricky part of this map, and what it's going to come down to is which one of these full combos we see break. Karania, Flick, they don't matter anymore. It's the other six players we have to watch out for, and the first one is not to drop. All the other five managed to hold on so far. This lead is going to go over back over to Australia so quickly, as long as they can keep holding. Canada is running out of time. They need a miss from Australia, and they need it soon, but Australia is looking so good into the ending. The ending is looking good right now. Vatra flicks on having another break, but Shinobu and Abba is still holding on to FCs, but it doesn't matter because of Delta 95 and Mitchup 97 actually, but with the Sway Yoba gloves. Yeah, it all equals out, and this core is going to be boosting super high. Because and the they all held. There it is, and Australia gonna be taking the point, bringing it back to 4 to 2, and Australia is going to prove us wrong with this one. They are not worried about Canada's warm up. They're not worried about Canada's qualifying no mod 3 score. They are the better no mod 3 team today, and they are going to keep themselves in this match for a little bit longer. Australia just put in sass, basically, and not no mod 3. Chilled a little Pretty bit. Pretty much, yeah. They trolled no mod 3 twice. And it turned out to be the better team in No Matri. There you go. It was it, a bait the whole time. It totally was a true bait. GG Australia. Good luck in the future plans for it. That, that's the main thing though. Get to go before four point eight, but now no more tech. Yeah, oh, tech. Oh my Gonna tech. be interesting. Um I will say 
Australia. Ah, oh, where is Australia? At the bottom. Ah, oh, you oh. might be right. Hold on a minute. Wait. Oh no, they did not the worst. Uh, 20, yeah, they're about average on tech, so I, I do think this could go either way. I would certainly favor Canada on the pick, but that is just because they are the higher seed. I think you would tend to favor them on most things on the match, but at the same time, on these early round pools where we can see very high team scores, uh, upwards of 3 million, that is where you can start to see a couple shit misses from some of the Canadian players give Australia a chance to actually win this match. Okay, good. This is not the dude. This is not uh, that other stone. This is not that other map. This is the higher map, SR. So, what this should be, it's gonna be a mess. I can tell you that. <coughs> but this is not the lower SR. It should be better in timing. But it's not gonna be. Uh, it's still gonna be a mess in like holding on a slider inside of our hands and stuff, but it's going to be flowy. Yeah, this one is going to be much more flowy, a little bit more finger control heavy uh, than a lot of your Nomad 4s at the 160 BPM, of course. And so I do think that's going to help out Candid a little bit. This is a style we really like to see them go for. And this is definitely one of the harder maps in the pool, not only to act, but especially to hold a combo. All those buzz sliders are so easy to find misses on, and there goes Torsi on the buzz slider. But again, the funny thing too, again, no one 3 was flowy too, so this seemed like an equal ground for both of them. But again, like you said, it's depending on whoever breaks. Absolutely right, but this is a very different kind of flow. And here we go into the chorus, and Chrono misses right before the chorus, so does Mischief, and all of a sudden, Australia only has one miss to go, and Canada holding on to Ooh. three. Delta Rhythm is the last FC down for Australia. Canada off to such a big lead now. Everybody holds through the cut stream. That have. Go ahead. You can't really say anything. That's it. It probably is. Yeah, there's no combos on Australia. The map is so short. We're already halfway through. And just look at the score lead. Skyrocket. Taurus, he finds another miss. And Australia's hopes and dreams of winning this match just go down the drain with every second. And there's really nothing else you could say. It's a way GG. It certainly the is. It's 400k. But no, actually, it's 500k. There's no way that Australia can come back from this. So, really, this... all we can say is just it's kind of going triple FC. That is the question the Australian fans in the chat just gonna have to suffer through the last quarter of this map. But remember, Australia, you still have a, you still have a lose bracket. Yes, so. that is very true. And everybody except for Golden holds on, so Canada still holding on to two FCs. Oh my god, don't interrupt it yet. Still up, but no, never mind. Actually, am, it's holding on to the bus sliders. Jeez. Yeah, honestly, I think bus sliders, they are very difficult for a lot of these players because they're not used to them, but. As long as you know how to time the buzz sliders, they're honestly not that difficult. Eyeball finds the miss at the end. Pretty unfortunate, not going to be getting the FC. But regardless, that is going to be the win for Canada. 5-2 to two over the Australian team. They will be moving on to winner's quarterfinals. Uh, where, meanwhile, Australia, of course, going to be dropping down to the loser's bracket. They are far from out of it yet. We have seen them put up some very strong performances on things like the GT1 where they got 3.3 million, things like the Nomad 3 where they had very impressive scores, and so they are going to be a very scary loser bracket team to go up against. Uh, yep. Canada, though, meanwhile, is going to be playing the winner of Russia versus Brazil, so that is potentially a very strong matchup very early on in the tournament. I think Canada is going to have a tough match ahead of them regardless of the winner. I think that's a Wii match too, if I think about it from CWC1. I believe it is. Canada won very decisively uh, in 6WC1 against Russia, but keep in mind, Canada